In this video, we'll explore some practical steps that diabetics can consider to help lower insulin resistance within this time frame. Remember, individual results may vary, but with dedication and the right strategies, you can make a positive impact on your insulin sensitivity and overall well-being. So, let's dive in and discover how you can take charge of your insulin resistance in just two short weeks. Number 1. Adopt a low-carb diet Incorporating a low-carb diet into your lifestyle can have a profound impact on managing insulin resistance and improving your health. And the good news is that you can start experiencing results within just two weeks. By reducing your carbohydrate intake, you can effectively stabilize your blood sugar levels and enhance your body's sensitivity to insulin. Here's why adopting a low-carb diet can benefit diabetics with insulin resistance. Along with practical steps to help you incorporate it into your daily eating habits. Stabilizing blood sugar. A low-carb diet helps regulate your blood sugar levels by preventing sudden spikes and crashes. By reducing your intake of carbohydrates, particularly those from processed and refined sources, you can maintain more stable and controlled blood sugar levels throughout the day. Begin by eliminating or significantly reducing foods that are high in carbohydrates, such as bread, pasta, rice, sugary snacks, and beverages. Instead, focus on including non-starchy vegetables, lean proteins, and healthy fats in your meals. Opt for whole unprocessed foods to minimize hidden sources of carbs. Enhancing insulin sensitivity. Adopting a low-carb diet improves your body's response to insulin, making your cells more sensitive to its effects. By reducing your carbohydrate intake, you decrease the demand for insulin, allowing your body to utilize it more efficiently. Choose foods with a lower glycemic index as they have a gentler impact on blood sugar levels. Incorporate high-quality protein sources like poultry, fish, tofu, and eggs into your meals. Include healthy fats from avocados, olive oil, nuts, and seeds. Fill your plate with non-starchy vegetables and limit your consumption of fruits to those with lower sugar content. Emphasizing whole nutrient-dense foods. A low-carb diet encourages the consumption of whole nutrient-dense foods that provide essential vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. This approach minimizes the intake of processed and refined carbohydrates. Include moderate portions of whole grains like quinoa, brown rice, and oats. Prioritize non-starchy vegetables such as leafy greens, broccoli, cauliflower, and peppers. Incorporate lean protein sources like chicken, turkey, fish, tofu, and legumes. Add healthy fats from sources like avocados, olive oil, nuts, and seeds to your meals. Staying hydrated. Hydration is essential for overall health and can support the effectiveness of a low-carb diet. Optimal hydration helps maintain proper blood flow, digestion, and metabolic function. Make it a habit to drink plenty of water throughout the day. Carry a water bottle with you to stay hydrated and consider having water with your meals. Minimize or avoid sugary beverages, as they can disrupt blood sugar control. Number 2. Control Portion Sizes Monitoring portion sizes is a crucial aspect of managing insulin resistance and promoting better blood sugar control. By understanding and controlling the amount of food you consume, you can effectively regulate your carbohydrate intake and prevent blood sugar spikes. Here's how monitoring portion sizes can benefit diabetics with insulin resistance, along with practical steps to help you incorporate it into your daily eating habits. Balanced macronutrient intake. Monitoring portion sizes allow you to maintain a balanced distribution of macronutrients in your meals. This means including appropriate amounts of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats to support optimal blood sugar management. By controlling portion sizes, you can ensure you're not overconsuming carbohydrates, which can lead to higher blood sugar levels. 
Use measuring cups, food scales, or visual cues to portion out your meals and snacks. Familiarize yourself with recommended serving sizes for different food groups. Pay attention to the carbohydrate content of foods and aim for a moderate intake that aligns with your specific dietary needs and goals. Controlling caloric intake. Monitoring portion sizes can also help you manage your caloric intake, which is crucial for weight management and overall health. For individuals with insulin resistance, maintaining a healthy weight is important as excess body weight can worsen insulin resistance and lead to higher blood sugar levels. Be mindful of portion sizes to avoid overeating. Start by using smaller plates and bowls which can create an optical illusion of larger portions. Pay attention to hunger and fullness cues to prevent overeating. Consider incorporating meal planning and pre-portioning your meals and snacks to help control portion sizes throughout the day. Preventing blood sugar spikes. By monitoring portion sizes, you can minimize the risk of blood sugar spikes after meals. Overeating or consuming large portions of carbohydrate-rich foods can lead to rapid increases in blood sugar levels, causing insulin spikes and potential difficulties in blood sugar regulation. Focus on portioning your meals to include a balance of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Fill half of your plate with non-starchy vegetables one quarter with lean protein sources, and the remaining quarter with whole grains or starchy vegetables. This balanced approach helps slow down the release of glucose into the bloodstream and promotes better blood sugar control. Mindful eating. Monitoring portion sizes encourages mindful eating, which involves being fully present and aware of your eating habits. By practicing mindfulness during meals, you can slow down your eating pace savor each bite and improve your overall relationship with food create a calm eating environment free from distractions such as television or electronic devices take time to chew your food thoroughly and pay attention to the flavors textures and sensations listen to your body's hunger and fullness cues to guide your portion sizes aim to eat slowly and mindfully giving your brain enough time to register satiety signals. Seeking support. It can be beneficial to seek support from a registered dietitian or healthcare professional who specializes in diabetes management. They can provide personalized guidance on portion sizes, meal planning, and making appropriate food choices based on your individual needs and preferences. Number three, intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is an eating pattern where you cycle between periods of eating and fasting. It's a popular dieting protocol that has been associated with various health benefits, including improved insulin sensitivity, which is especially relevant for those dealing with insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. Intermittent fasting works by allowing the body to use its stored glucose and fat for energy during the fasting periods. The body first depletes the glucose stored in the liver, and then it begins to break down stored body fat for energy. The process of breaking down fat for energy produces ketones, which are efficient fuel molecules that can be used by most of our cells, including brain cells. As your body burns through these energy stores, it doesn't need to produce as much insulin because there's less glucose to manage. This can help to improve insulin sensitivity, thereby reducing insulin resistance. In the case of diabetics, the primary goal is to lower and control blood sugar levels. If you're insulin resistant, your body doesn't respond to insulin properly, which leads to an accumulation of glucose in the bloodstream. When you practice intermittent fasting, the body isn't constantly processing food, and this downtime without constant insulin production can increase insulin sensitivity. Implementing intermittent fasting into your routine might be simpler than you think. One of the most common forms of intermittent fasting is the 16 by 8 method, which involves fasting for 16 hours and eating all your daily meals within an 8-hour window. 
This can be as simple as skipping breakfast and eating your first meal at noon and your last meal at 8 p.m. The good news is that the 16-hour fast includes the time you spend sleeping, so it's not as daunting as it may sound. Here are some practical steps to incorporate intermittent fasting into your daily routine. Choose your method. Decide on an intermittent fasting schedule that works best for you. The 16 by 8 method is a great starting point, but there are other options, like the 5 to 2 diet, eating normally for five days a week, then restricting your calorie intake to 500 to 600 calories for two days a week, or eat stop eat, a 24-hour fast once or twice a week. Plan your meals. Consider what foods will be most satisfying and nourishing during your eating window. Remember, intermittent fasting isn't about what you eat, but when you eat. That being said, for best results, Focus on balanced meals rich in protein, fiber, and healthy fats to keep you full and energized. Stay hydrated. During your fasting periods, you can and should still drink water. Staying hydrated will help you feel better during the fasting period and can help curb hunger pangs. Non-caloric beverages like black tea are also typically allowed during the fasting window. Start slow. If a 16-hour fast seems too intimidating, start with a smaller fasting window, say 12 hours, and gradually increase it as you get comfortable. Monitor your progress. Keep track of how your body is responding to intermittent fasting. Pay attention to your energy levels, hunger, and any changes in your weight or blood sugar levels. This can help you adjust your fasting schedule or meal planning as necessary. Number four, regular physical activity. Engaging in regular physical activity is another effective strategy to help manage insulin resistance, particularly for individuals with diabetes. When you exercise, your muscles demand energy, and they get this from glucose in your blood. Thus, the more you exercise, the more glucose your muscles use, reducing the overall levels in your bloodstream. In addition, exercise makes your body's insulin more efficient, meaning it can better transport glucose into your cells where it's needed for energy. In the short term, the effect of exercise can last for several hours or even up to a day or two, depending on the intensity and duration of your workout. However, for long-term benefits and to significantly improve insulin sensitivity, regular and consistent exercise is required. Over a period of two weeks, committing to a regular exercise routine can start to enhance insulin sensitivity. Although the precise duration can vary between individuals and is influenced by factors such as diet, initial insulin sensitivity, and the intensity and duration of exercise, it's reasonable to expect some degree of improvement within this time frame. But how to actually start and maintain a regular exercise routine? Here are some tips. Firstly, choose a type of exercise that you enjoy. This could be anything from brisk walking, jogging, cycling, swimming, dancing, to team sports or weightlifting. The key is to select activities you like because you're more likely to stick with them. To manage blood glucose levels effectively, it's recommended that most adults with diabetes aim for a total of at least 150 minutes of moderate to vigorous intensity aerobic exercise each week, spread over at least three days, with no more than two consecutive days without exercise. Next, make a schedule. Plan your workouts at the same time each day to help turn it into a habit. Make sure to account for rest days as recovery is equally important as the workouts themselves. Your schedule should reflect your current fitness level. If you're just starting out, you might begin with shorter, more manageable bouts of exercise and gradually increase as your fitness improves. Monitoring your blood glucose levels before and after exercise is also important. Exercise usually lowers blood glucose levels, but there are situations where it can cause them to rise instead. Understanding how your body responds to different types of exercise can help you adjust your routine or meal planning as necessary. Lastly, 
Be patient and consistent. Progress may be slow, but it's important to stick with it. Over time, regular physical activity will improve your body's insulin sensitivity and help manage your blood glucose levels more effectively. Before starting any new exercise program, particularly if you have a chronic condition like diabetes, it's crucial to consult with your healthcare provider. They can assess your overall health and provide guidance on an exercise plan that's safe and suitable for your needs. And there you have it, folks. We've explored some effective strategies to help normalize insulin resistance in just two weeks. Remember, these methods are not an overnight cure, but a process that requires consistency and commitment. Everyone's body responds differently. So be patient and give your body the time it needs to adjust. If you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe to this channel and watch this video on how to lower blood sugar naturally. Thank you for watching and remember to always stay healthy.